when I talk about it now, it's not only friends, but we have had relatives, you know, uncles and aunts, cousins, people who've been to, you know, Laogai camps. There's so many, too many, in fact, to describe. But um, it is something that every Tibetan carries because we have very close people. There's not one family, not one person who does not have some relation or friend who is even now in jail or who didn't die in jail or in, you know, uh, in a prison camp. So it, it is something that all of us Tibetans must stand up against, not just convince ourselves that the Chinese government is gradually becoming you know, democratic, that it will reform, that it will liberalize, but to realize that it won't. This is a system that is you know, self-sustaining in its evil, that is much more sort of cleverer and sophisticated than the Nazi regime, because they can change. You know, the Nazis have to wear their fancy uniform and do their salute. The Chinese leaders don't have to do that. When times change, they can wear Armani suit. They're fine. They don't have to wear their mouth suit. When Deng Xiaoping went to Texas, he put on a cowboy hat. These are chameleons in the way of dictators, you know. So we have to be very mindful, not only be resolute, but we have to be observant and mindful in the way we deal with this regime. These are not your second-rate kind of uh, military dictators in South America with their uniforms and medals and dark glasses, you know, that you can immediately hate because they're stereotypes for the left, you know. The Chinese dictators are very sophisticated. They will be anything that you want them to be at that moment, you know. They speak softly, you know. Tomorrow, if everyone becomes a hippie, you can see the Chinese leaders will also be singing, you know, Gumbaya and doing everything they have to do as long as they stay in power and perpetuate the regime. So we have to really be much more sophisticated in our response.